Okay, so polyface farms. This is one of my favorite examples because we can go really deep into this. Um, these slides uh, were given to me um, by Joel Saladin. And so I was able to, after taking the Saladin semester, reviewing it and then writing about Joel and then having Joel write for my books and all this stuff, I, he, he, they entrusted me with these, with these photos to use in my books. and. And it's, it's pretty incredible what they're doing there. And they're just pretty incredible people in general. And so it's an honor to be able to share these pictures. It's an honor to be able to represent um, in a small way the Polyface uh, Farm and the Saladin family. Uh, they are doing amazing things. Primarily, Polyface Farm is a grass culture farm where they're focused on grass as the photosynthetic point of contact. Con uh, contact and they're shifting their animals daily. And so he has um, these areas and he uses the electric fence. So he doesn't have fixed exact areas, but he is constantly shifting them on his property so that they never get that second bite. Th this is the, the cows on an electric fence and they're imitating, it's holistic grazing, so they're imitating the way the animals behave before predators uh, were removed from the landscape. So when predators kept pressure on, they kept them moving. But in winter, something really cool happens. So they're shifting them around, right? And when they don't get to an area, they let it grow out and they cut it for hay for winter. And it ends up here, stacked in the hayloft. Now half the hayloft is for storage and half the hayloft is for feeding. And it's a deep bedding mulch situation. So they're putting that, that, that uh, straw down in those troughs and those troughs are actually able to go up and down. You can see from the side angle here that the cows walk in, they manure, they urinate, um, they pull the straw and the hay out um, and they make a general mess of things. Uh, and see, you can see here the pulley system really well. But when, when they lay down seeds and, and, and straw and hay, and, and wood chips in between each feeding to soak up, to bond uh, with that nitrogen and break down together um, so that it composts properly and doesn't, um, and say sanitary. But then all the fermented grains in there, they send in pigs later on to root it out and mix it up, fluff it all up. So it's easier to move um, later on when Daniel or the, one of the interns goes to move all that out and compost it and then put it onto the fields, which is their main investment. It goes in the garden too, but primarily it goes in the fields, which is pretty epic. I mean, most people would be like, oh, it's compost, it goes in the, but, but no, they're spreading out over the fields. Obviously they could probably take it up a notch if they you know, made compost teas and, and use those. But this is what they're doing. Uh, that's more infrastructure, that's more cost. and. As you, as you see when you study salad and stuff, it's all about lowering the cost and lowering the overhead. So um, the cow patties that are being made by these cows in these grazing cells, fly eggs get laid in them and the larva develops. Um, and those could become flies that harass the cows in the herd, which we see many, many places um, all the time. But with chickens involved, they're going to sanitize the patties. They're going to eat the larvae. They're going to spread it out. It's going to oxidize. It's going to, you know, um, be in the sun. It's going to dry out. It's just going to desiccate. Um, so you're going to sterilize it. You're going to spread that, um, uh, that fertility out. And you're also going to stop the pest cycle. You're going to interrupt it. And you're going to get a free resource to strengthen and feed your chickens. So this is right here. The chickens are following the cows. The cows are in the background. The chickens are in the foreground. Um, and they uh, don't even need um, any fencing around these chickens because they're just going to stay right with the herd and stay right with their housing. And they're just going to be able to move them along. Uh, this operation right here is a little different. Um, they're, they're not um, following necessarily. Right here, they're, um, they're grazing grass and they're also um, getting to, they're staying penned in. This is the Millennium Falcon. So let's look at that closer. Um, uh, so th this is an egg laying machine right here. They're, they're eating grass, they're eating bugs, and it's an electric fence setup. It's very, very simple. All right, 
So these are egg mobiles. As you can see, the chickens can get in and out. And as you can see, the tops are all open. So it allows for the air to get pulled up and out very easily. And this is their feed. You can see that uh, it's a lot of feed and they're traveling around with it um, all the time with them. And these are big skids uh, with wheels and everything. And they're dragging these with trucks uh, or four wheelers or something like that, uh, something uh, machine. Uh, or a tractor. Um, and then uh, this is inside and you can see uh, how just using sheet metal and um, feeders uh, that they're able to accomplish things, scrap wood. Um, this is all very easily done. Um, you can see the uh, where the chickens are laying their eggs um, right up there. And then you can see this system where in the winter the chickens are indoors they are, they, they have, they have feed. Um, and Joel says that's the weakest link in his operation is the feed uh, for chickens. And then the, uh, the rabbits, their droppings fall down and are fed, uh, fed to the chickens. And so this is a deep mulch bedding situation. So they're constantly adding carbonation material and building soil. So this is a soil building winter uh, housing operation. And pigs can also be housed this way too. You kind of got to give the chickens a place to be separate from the pigs um, so that uh, they have enough room um, to get out of the way of the pigs if they need to. And so you've got laying boxes up top, water, feed, and then the, the pigs down below. And notice that there's cattle panels around the sides. Um, otherwise, the pigs would just escape. And then rabbits, the, he also does rabbit tractors. So they're going to be eating the grass um, and they're going to be making meat and fur and amazing, absolutely amazing manure. And then he's growing chickens that same exact way as well. So he's doing chickens multiple, multiple ways. Um, and these are broilers. So these are meat birds. These are not laying eggs. And so they're just being raised on the grass and feed and they're getting water too and they're being shuffled along along the ground. And this is from Google Earth. You can see those chicken tractors and bunny tractors moving across this landscape. And there's Joel now. <laughs> so the key takeaways, it's one of, if not the best, regenerative agricultural model uh, past and present. It's world-class internship programs and farm day tours um, are celebrated, they're on the internet, people love them. And this is the, one of the best examples, if not the best example, of grass farming. And Joel's always leveraging animal instincts to lessen labor by stacking their functions, by having them interact in interesting ways, and he's doing it also to increase their systemic health. And what's really neat, I think, about Joel's system is the animal successions he uses, how he follows one animal after another in a natural pattern to create, a, um, to create uh, abundance, consistent abundance in soil growth. And, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty to be pretty amazing. He uses scrap wood and scrap metal and just throws things together and they work so well. And meanwhile, they're not, you know, some high tech gadgetry um, and he's accomplishing amazing things at the same time.